Women in Italy refers to females who are from, or reside, in Italy. The legal and social status of Italian women has undergone rapid transformations and changes during the past decades. This includes family laws, the enactment of anti-discrimination measures, and reforms to the penal code, in particular with regard to crimes of violence against women. History For the Roman period, see Women in Ancient Rome. Women in pre-modern Italy During the Middle Ages, Italian women were considered to have very few social powers and resources, although some widows inherited ruling positions from their husbands, such in the case of Matilda of Canossa. Educated women could find opportunities of leadership only in religious convents, such as Claire of Assisi and Catherine of Siena. The Renaissance 15th-16th centuries challenged conventional customs from the medieval period. Women were still confined to the roles of Monica, Mowgli, Serva, Cortigiana. Nun, wife, servant, courtesan. However, literacy spread among upper-class women in Italy and a growing number of them stepped out into the secular intellectual circles. Venetian-born Christine de Pizan wrote The City of Ladies in 1404, and in it she described women. S gender as having no innate inferiority to men. S although being born to serve the other sex. Some women were able to gain an education on their own, or receive tutoring from their father or husband. Lucrezia Tornabuoni in Florence, Veronica Gamber at Correggio, Veronica Franco and Moderata Fonti in Venice, and Vittoria Colonna in Rome were among the renowned women intellectuals of the time. Powerful women rulers of the Italian Renaissance, such as Isabella di Este, Catherine de Medici, or Lucrezia Borgia, combined political skill with cultural interests and patronage. Unlike her peers, Isabella di Mora, an important poet of the time, was kept a virtual prisoner in her own castle and her tragic life makes her a symbol of female oppression. By the late 16th and early 17th centuries, Italian women intellectuals were embraced by contemporary culture as learned daughters, wives, mothers, and equal partners in their household. Among them were composers Francesca Caccini and Leonora Baroni, and painter Artemisia Gentileschi. Outside the family setting, Italian women continued to find opportunities in the convent, and now increasingly also as singers in the theater. Anna Renzi, described as the first diva in the history of opera, and Barbara Strozzi are two examples. In 1678, Elena Cornaro Piscopia was the first woman in Italy to receive an academical degree, in philosophy, from the University of Padua. In the 18th century, the Enlightenment offered for the first time to Italian women, such as Laura Bassi, Cristina Roccati, Anna Mirandi Manzolini, and Maria Gaetana Agnesi, the possibility to engage in the fields of science and mathematics. Italian sopranos and prime dun continued to be famous all around Europe, such as Vittoria Tessi, Caterina Gabrielli, Lucrezia Aguiari, and Faustina Bordoni. Other notable women of the period include painter Rosalba Carriera and composer Maria Margarita Grimani. Women of the Risorgimento The Napoleonic Age and the Italian Risorgimento offered for the first time to Italian women the opportunity to be politically engaged. In 1799 in Naples, poet Eleonora Fonseca Pimentel was executed as one of the protagonists of the short-lived Parthenopean Republic. In the early 19th century, some of the most influential salons where Italian patriots, revolutionaries, and intellectuals were meeting were run by women, such as Bianca Malesi Mohon, Clara Maffei, Cristina Trivolzio di Belgiojoso, and Antonietta de Pace. Some women even distinguished themselves in the battlefield, such as Anita Garibaldi, the wife of Giuseppe Garibaldi, Rosalia Monmason, the only woman to have joined the Expedition of the Thousand, Giuseppina Vidala, who along with her sister Paulina led an anti-Bourbon revolt in Messina in 1848, and Giuseppe Bolinara Calcagno, who fought as a soldier in Garibaldi's liberation of Sicily. The Kingdom of Italy, 1861-1925 Between 1861 and 1925, women were not permitted to vote in the new Italian state. 
In 1864, Anna Maria Mazzoni triggered a widespread women's movement in Italy, through the publication of Woman and Her Social Relationships on the occasion of the revision of the Italian Civil Code La Donna e i suoi rapporti sociali in occasion della revision del Codice Italiano. In 1868, Alay Gualberto Vicari began publishing the journal Women in Padua. A growing percentage of young women were now employed in factories, but were excluded from political life and were particularly exploited. Under the influence of socialist leaders, such as Anna Kuleshov, women became active in the constitution of the first labor unions. In 1902, the first law to protect the labor of women and children was approved, it forbade them working in mines and limited women to 12 hours of work per day. By the 1880s, women were making inroads into higher education. In 1877, Ernestina Puritz Manas paper was the first woman to receive a university degree in modern Italy, in medicine, and in 1907 Rina Monti was the first female professor in an Italian university. The most famous women of the time were actresses Eleonora Duce, Lida Borelli, and Francesca Bertini, writers Matilda Serrao, Sibylla Alaramo, Carolina Invernizio, and Grazia Deletta, who won the 1926 Nobel Prize in Literature, sopranos Luisa Tetrazzini and Lina Cavallari, and educator Maria Montessori. Under the fascist regime, 1925-1945 Even before the March on Rome, despite the difficulties of the revolutionary period, Biennio Rosso, there were still a hundred militant fascist women, while in Monza the first women's fascist group was founded on 12 May 1920. The first point of the fascist manifesto of Piazza Sansepolcro asked, Vote and eligibility for women. The law of of November 1925 established in fact the female vote in local elections. In 1938, moreover, Mussolini even tried to ensure the representation of women in the Chamber of Fasci and Corporations, but the King Vittorio Emanuele III opposed the idea. Which makes understand by which environments arrive the greatest resistances to overcoming the old social and cultural patterns. The truth is that fascism intended to offer women a third way between the oratory and the house. The nationalization of all the individual destinies called each person, man or woman, to participate actively in the construction of the greatness of their country. As Annalisa Taranova wrote in his Kamichi et Nair. Notable for that time were the rules that established the ban of the dismissal in case of pregnancy and a waiting period for maternity. More than only this laws, challenging the prevailing moralism, fascism will bring to stadiums thousands of young girls, in an attempt of collective mobilization that basically created something from nothing. Women's sports Entirely absent in Italy before 1922. In 1935, G.A. Chirco is even more explicit, the fascist state can't conceive the woman locked in her house. Not always, unfortunately, this awareness came to dismantle the old pre-fascist prejudices, even though it is thanks to the regime's effort if in the Olympics of 1936 Italy conquered a historic gold medal in the 80 meters hurdles with the athlete Andina Valla, who celebrated with a fascist salute from the top step of the podium. Valla was then received with full honors in Venice Square by Mussolini. The young Italian women of the regime were no longer attached to the skirt of their mothers and had managed to stop with the imprisonment of older sisters, which, at their age, came out of the house only in mom's or aunt's company," acknowledged the anti-fascist Victoria de Grazia. And last but not least is remarkable experience of the SAF, Servizio Auxiliario Feminile, the first female army in the world wanted by Mussolini during the period of the Italian Social Republic 1943-1945. The Italian Republic 1945-present After WW2, women were given the right to vote in national elections and to be elected to government positions. The new Italian Constitution of 1948 affirmed that women had equal rights. 
It was not however until the 1970s that women in Italy scored some major achievements with the introduction of laws regulating divorce 1970, abortion 1978, and the approval in 1975 of the new family code. Famous women of the period include politicians Nyald Iati, Tina Anselmi, and Emma Bonino, actresses Anna Mignani, Sofia Loren, and Gina Lollobrigida, soprano Renata Tibaldi, ballet dancer Carla Fracci, costume designer Milena Cananera, sportwomen Sara Simeone, Deborah Campagnoni, Valentina Vizzali, and Federica Pellegrini, writers Natalia Ginsberg, Elsa Moranti, Alda Marini, and Oriana Falacci, architect Guy Alenti, scientist and 1986 Nobel Prize winner winner Rita Levi Montalcini, astrophysicist Margarita Hack, astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti, pharmacologist Elena Catania, and CERN Director General Fabiola Gianotti. Issues in present time Today, women have the same legal rights as men, and have mainly the same job, business, and education opportunities. Reproductive rights and health the maternal mortality rate in Italy is 4 deaths, 100,000 live births, as of 2010, one of the lowest in the world. The HIV, AIDS rate is 0.3% of adults aged 15 to 49. Estimates of 2009, abortion laws were liberalized in 1978. Abortion is usually legal during the first trimester of pregnancy, while at later stages of pregnancy it is permitted only for medical reasons, such as problems with the health of the mother or fetal defects. However, in practice it is often difficult to obtain an abortion, due to the rising number of doctors and nurses who refuse to perform an abortion based on moral, religious opposition, which they are legally allowed to do. Marriage and family Divorce in Italy was legalized in 1970. Obtaining a divorce in Italy is still a lengthy and complicated process, requiring a period of legal separation before it can be granted, although the period of separation has been reduced in 2015. Adultery was decriminalized in 1969, after the Constitutional Court of Italy struck down the law as unconstitutional, because it discriminated against women. In 1975, Law No. 151-1975 provided for gender equality within marriage, abolishing the legal dominance of the husband. Unmarried cohabitation in Italy and births outside of marriage are not as common as in many other Western countries, but in recent years they have increased. In 2016, 29.9% of all births were outside of marriage, but there are significant differences by regions, with unmarried births being more common in the North than in the South. Italy has a low total fertility rate, with 1.35 children born, woman, in 2015, which is below the replacement rate of 2.1. Of women born in 1968, 20% stayed childless. In the EU, only Greece, Spain, Cyprus, Poland, and Portugal have a lower total fertility rate than Italy. Female education Women in Italy tend to have highly favorable results, and mainly excel in secondary and tertiary education. Ever since the Italian economic miracle, the literacy rate of women as well as university enrollment has gone up dramatically in Italy. The literacy rate of women is only slightly lower than that of men. As of 2011, the literacy rate was 98.7% female and 99.2% male. 60% of Italian university graduates are female, and women are excellently represented in all academic subjects, including mathematics, information technology, and other technological areas which are usually occupied by males. Work Female standards at work are generally of a high quality and professional, but are not as good as in education. The probability of a woman getting employed is mainly related to her qualifications, and 80% of women who graduate from university go on to seek jobs. Women in Italy face a number of challenges. Although gender roles are not as strict as they have been in the past, sexual and domestic abuse is still quite prevalent in Italy. On average, women do 3.7 hours more housework than men. Men make up the majority of the parliament, women represent less than a third of the parliament. Additionally, women in Italy are not adequately represented in the workforce, as Italy has one of the lowest rates of employment for women of the countries within the European Union. 
Women's employment rate for ages 15 to 64 is 47.8% in 2015, compared to 66.5% for men. Many women are still frequently expected to stay at home and care for the house and children, as opposed to earning a salary and becoming a breadwinner, and few senior managerial positions are held by women. Furthermore, there are unequal standards and expectations for the few women who actually make it into a professional setting. For example, 9% of working Italian mothers have lost their jobs due to pregnancy. Although legislation protects pregnant women, in accordance with EU directives, the social climate still does not reflect full equality, nor does it protect against abuse. An infamous practice in Italy is that of white resignation, demission in Bianco, whereby female employees are asked as condition for their employment or promotion to sign undated resignation papers, which are kept by the employer who adds a date on them when the woman is pregnant so that she resigns. At that date, social views, particularly in southern Italy, remain quite conservative. Italian lawmakers are working to further protect and support women as they break gender stereotypes and join the workforce, but complete cultural change is slow. Nevertheless, the proportion of women in the workforce has increased in recent years. According to World Bank, in 1990 women made up 36.3% of the labor force, while by 2016 they made up 42.1%. Pay Women holding white-collar, high-level, or office jobs tend to get paid the same as men, but women with blue-collar or manual positions are paid one-third less than their male counterparts. Culture and society Today, there is a growing acceptance of gender equality, and people, especially in the North, tend to be far more liberal towards women getting jobs, going to university, and doing stereotypically male things. However, in some parts of society, women are still stereotyped as being simply housewives and mothers, also reflected in the fact of a higher than EU average female unemployment. Ideas about the appropriate social behavior of women have traditionally had a very strong impact on the state institutions, and it has long been held that a woman's honor is more important than her well-being. Until the 1970s, rape victims were often expected and forced to marry their rapist. In 1965, Franca Viola, a 17-year-old girl from Sicily, created a sensation when she refused to marry the man who kidnapped and raped her. In refusing this, rehabilitating marriage. To the perpetrator, she went against the traditional social norms of the time which dictated such a solution. Until 1981, the criminal code itself supported this practice, by exonerating the rapist who married his victim. The Franca Viola incident was made into a movie called La Mogli Più Bella. In more recent times the media, particularly TV shows, have been accused of promoting sexist stereotypes. In 2017, one talk show of a state-owned broadcaster was cancelled after accusations that it promoted discriminatory views of women. Violence against women In recent years, Italy has taken steps to address violence against women and domestic violence, including creating Law No. 38 of 23 April 2009. Italy has also ratified the Convention on Preventing and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence. Traditionally, as in other Mediterranean European areas, the concept of family honor was very important in Italy. Indeed, until 1981, the criminal code provided for mitigating circumstances for so-called honor killings. Traditionally, honor crimes used to be more prevalent in southern Italy. Gallery Bibliography. Ah, B. B. Il Novecento della Italian. Una storia ancora da raccontare. Roma, Editori Rianiti, 2001. Addis Saba, Marina Partigian. La Dun della Resistenza. Milano, Mergia, 1998. Bellomo, Manlio. La condizione giuridica della donna in Italia, vicende antiche e moderna. Torino, Airy, 1970. Bonesci, Marta. Di Testaloro. Dici Italian che hanno fatto il Novecento. Milano, Monadori, 2002. Bruni, Emanuela, Patrizia Foglia, Marina Messina, Acura di 
La Donna in Italia 1848-1914. Unite per Unir. Sinicello Balsamo, Milano, Silvana, 2011. Creveri, Benedetta, Amanti e Regine, Il Pater della Dunn, Milano, Adelphi, 2005. Dal Pozzo, Giuliana, La Dunn nella storia d'Italia. Torino, Teddy, 1969. De Giorgio, Michaela, La Italian dall'anita Aghi, Modelli cultuali e comportamenti sociali. Roma Bari, La Terza, 1992. Drago, Antonietta, Dun e Amori del Risorgimento. Milano, Palazzi, 1960. Grazia, Victoria de, How Fascism Ruled Women, Italy, 1922-1945. Berkeley, University of California Press, 1993. Matthews Grieco, Sara F. Acura di. Monica, Mowgli, Serba, Cordigiana, Vita e Imagine della Dun Tra Rinascimento e Contraraforma. Firenze, Morgana, 2001. Migliucci, Deborah. Brief Storia della Conquista Femminile nel Lavoro e nella Società Italiana. Milano, Camera del Lavoro Metropolitana, 2007. Roxella, Eugenia, e Lucetta Scaraffa. Italian 3 Vol. Roma, Dipartimento per la Pari Opportunità, 2003. Rossi Doria, Anna, Acura di. Ace Punto e la Storia della Dun in Italia. Roma, Viella, 2003. Wilson, Perry. Women in 20th Century Italy. Palgrave Macmillan, 2009. See also Women in Ancient Rome References External links Valentina Piatelli, History of Women Emancipation in Italy Women in Italian Universities Women in the Italian Resistance during WW2 Italian Women Who Made History Women in Italy, from the unification to the present.